It was a beautiful summer day. Warm, sunshine, the type of day that sunglasses weren't even enough to block the sun as it glistened off the water. And there I stood, watching my niece. She had made this wonderful discovery. Perhaps you know as well that if you jump into the water at a pool, you will resurface. And she must again, and we have to do it again. And watch me, Aunt Michelle, let's do it again. It was no wonder that our neighborhood pool was full. Laughter, splashing. I had lived in my neighborhood for about 10 years, but this was only our second summer at the pool. We had only recently joined, and this was a big step for myself, my daughter Ryan, and my son Jackson. Previously, prior to joining the pool, I had been in a circumstance that didn't permit me to socialize. So it was easier to stay distant from my neighbors. I would smile and nod. I would acknowledge faces I saw every single day as I walked the kids to school or walked my dogs, but that would be it. I would smile and nod. I wouldn't say I knew my neighbors, and I definitely didn't know their names. It wasn't that I was rude. It's certainly not that at all. I'm not rude at all. It was just easier to remain distant. Actually, you know what? If I'm going to be honest, I'll tell you the truth. I was ashamed. If I got to know my neighbors, I would have to acknowledge that controlling circumstance that I was in. I had to acknowledge infidelity and abuse that I don't think, in all honesty, I was ready to admit to myself. So I couldn't get close to my neighbors. I had to hide behind that smile and a nod. I couldn't get to know their names. I had to rely on that safety of the distance and use that as a barrier. So now that I was out of that circumstance, you can see while being at the pool, a small gesture, sitting on the poolside that day was a big event for me. And splash, Elena goes again water blinking off her eyes as she did resurface. I was very happy sitting on the poolside. And then, there was a sound. It was a sound that actually stopped all the laughter at the pool. It was a gut-wrenching sound, a sickening sound, and a sound that I can still hear now. It was the sound of a body slamming into the concrete. And the pool did. It came to an immediate halt as everyone looked around and they searched for that source. And I don't know how I knew, but in that moment, I knew exactly what had happened. My seven-year-old, Jackson, Mom, 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 I'm going to jump off the high dive. And immediately I looked to the diving boards and I could see, prone on the concrete, little legs in little le yellow Lego shorts. How do I get to him? As soon as the pool had stopped, immediately it rushed in chaotic speed. I actually fathomed swimming to him as I was across the pool, as illogical as that sounds. But I kicked off my flip-flops, somehow started to run over to him, pleading, please let him be okay, as if last minute bargaining is gonna make any difference in this situation. But I scolded myself, you be calm. Whatever circumstance he is in, what I feared the worst, you be calm, mom. And there he was, his eyes were open, and he was looking around, but he was very afraid. <gasps> is there blood? There's no blood. Did he hit his head? How did he not hit his head? His little arm was crooked, but there was no blood. I don't think he had hit his head. I kneeled down next to him and I said, Jackson, you look at me. You look at me right now. I'm here. And as soon as I said those words that I was here, help was here. Bill, a father who I'd seen every single day walking to school, walking his own kids, says to me, I'm an EMT, and immediately reassured Jackson, hold still, buddy, we're gonna help you. And if you've never seen the face of a guardian angel, I'll tell you they exist. Because to my left, Erica, another mother I had seen around the pool every time we had been there, says to me, my name is Erica, I'm a trauma ER nurse, and I'm going to help you. 
the faces of the lifeguards who couldn't have been more than children themselves. I have no doubts one of their moms had dropped them off for work that day. They looked at me steadfast, ready to do their job. Colleen, a neighbor said, get in the ambulance. I'll get your things. My sister-in-law, because oh my goodness, that's right. I was there with my nieces, my daughter. Did I forget? How could I have forgotten? And she says to me, you go with him. I'll call your mom, thankfully. He'll be okay. It'll be okay. They load Jackson into the ambulance. And again, he wasn't crying, surprisingly enough, but he was afraid. How do you take pain from your child? How do you take it onto yourself? Although by the end of the ambulance ride, I will give him credit, he was trading Minecraft tips with the paramedics. So, and would you believe, I don't even believe it myself and I was there. This little boy fell 14 feet to the concrete below and ended up with a broken collarbone. A broken collarbone, I'll take it. A broken bone never sounded so good to me in my life. And immediately, neighbors began showing up at our house, bringing dinners, bringing Lego sets, much to my son's delight. It's a pretty amazing trick to see a little boy with his arm in a sling still putting together Legos. We became somewhat celebrities in that everyone's like, oh, you're the one, your son fell. How is he? Is he okay? I did have to explain to my son that no, it's not that everybody's talking about it. It's rather that everybody cared. And in an instant like that, everyone wanted to know, how wasn't he injured more? How wasn't he more hurt? And I had to express them, I don't know. I really don't know. I saw it in Erica's face, a sense of, maybe it was a guardian angel. How do you say thank you to that? My son also felt, we've sent pizza to the lifeguards, of course, and we did say thank you notes, but we all, my daughter, son, and I felt a need. We need to say thank you. We need to pay it forward. How do you begin to do that? And at the same time as entertaining a child with his arm in a sling at the end of summer. But it was actually my son Jackson who came up with the idea. He remembered earlier in the summer when we had been in South Haven, Michigan, and my daughter had found a pig. Not a literal pig, of course, but rather a rock was painted as a pig. And we thought at first, well, this is interesting. Do you take it? Do you leave it here? What is this, this little pig rock? And with a little bit of research, we immediately found the idea of kindness rocks. Kindness rocks, for those of you who don't know, are rocks that are painted with a positive word on them, or maybe an inspirational quote for someone who's a little bit more crafty with their lettering. Maybe it's as an animal or a seasonal picture. It really adds a fun new meaning to the Charlie Brown phrase of, I got a rock. But we liked this idea and Jackson suggested, I think we should do this. We should paint kindness rocks for our community, for our neighbors. And I had some paint as a, I like to do art as a hobby and it's part of my own healing. And so we pulled those paints out. And I have to admit, Painting rocks it initially is not as easy as you would think, writing a single phrase on a rock. And we even laughed at the time. I think it looks like maybe a kindergartner painted these. But the fun thing was, it didn't matter. We began to put these rocks out at the neighborhood park. Of course, we put them by the pool. We put them around the school. And the feedback, we, even though the rocks were anonymous, we had put a little hashtag on the back simply to see if we could follow where they went or maybe if someone had found them. It was so heartwarming. Faces of kids that were just delighted, even with that maybe they were badly drawn rocks. And I realized these rocks mean something more than just a thank you. I had not gone to the pool because I had a wall around myself. I had put up a barrier. And now these rocks quite literally were that wall coming down. My neighborhood had told me that I had been seen, that absolutely I was part of our community. And that even though I had kept distance, that I was welcome and they knew who I was, even if we didn't know each other's names. So we began with that little bit of feedback to take rocks pretty much everywhere we went. 
Our skills get a little bit better the more we practice them, but we would take rocks to the river walk, to the DuPage River Trail, up to Wisconsin. Um, we took them with us to the great state of Colorado. And the feedback began to pour in. People were thrilled with these rocks, even if they didn't necessarily have a quote that pertained to them at that moment, they felt seen, they felt part of this community that maybe they didn't expect to. They got that little bit of brightness in their day. And so what started to a certain extent as a personal thank you and a personal journey for myself grew so much beyond that. We received notice from Michigan and, Colo and also Colorado that some of travelers had found these rocks and were taking them with them. People contacted us and said, I know it's not likely. Is there any chance you could leave a rock here in this location again? Because my son would sure like to find one. A woman contacted us on social media, again, solely through a hashtag, so an anonymous, but she told me that she um, was a cancer patient and finding that rock gave her a little bit of hope and just our little thank you. And most excitedly, one of those rocks that my son drew himself and painted on himself probably was one of the rocks we originally kind of scoffed at and said, it's not kindergarten work, that's at least second grade quality, kiddo. But we had taken it to Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, and someone found that rock, packed it in their suitcase, probably explained to TSA why they had a rock and took it to Iceland. And I got an update on the hashtags. I think we have some, some this is a mistake. Someone sent us pictures from Iceland until I saw it. Oh, Jackson's kindness rock. So the point of my story isn't to glamorize my own rock star lifestyle by any means, <laughs> but rather that it was something that people said, that was you, that was a part of you, part of your wanting to be part of the community spread beyond that. It's spread across states, across the world. So whatever makes you, you, you never know when it could make a world of difference. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.